Another week has come and gone. And Pops, you know what's still happening? Uh, the wholesale value of used cars continues to decline at the auto auctions. All right, so here is the deal. Whether you look at Black Book Data, who publishes their data weekly, or Cox Automotive's Mannheim, which is the largest auto auction in the United States, both are showing precipitous declines in wholesale used car prices. Yes. Black Book for the most recent week showed another 0.72 decline. What's interesting here, Dad, is we are seeing different subsets of vehicles be treated differently. Luxury cars, even in the wake of Hurricane Ian, which we now expect somewhere around 50,000 vehicles were destroyed or totaled as a result of the hurricane that comes from Cox Automotive, luxury cars are still dropping most precipitously. Yes. We are actually seeing back on the Mannheim data, year over year, luxury car values are down nearly 5%. And in the Black Book data, it reflects it as well. You can't be too surprised here, Dad. We've searched even on our own car search and we've seen luxury cars that have dropped in price. But some dealers actually are still holding out hope on retail prices. Your read on the room isn't that necessarily retail prices are going to plummet like wholesale have, but negotiability is still up. I, I Yeah, I mean, dealers hate to lower prices. You know, they, they like to sell a car many times based off of what they paid for it. Yep. Well, just because they pay too much for it doesn't mean that the consumer would be willing to pay too much for it. Um, so you can't, you, 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 you shouldn't price your vehicles based necessarily on what you paid for it, if you paid too much. Um, but if you do, then you should at least find yourself in a position where you're more willing to negotiate off of that price than you might have been in the past. Um, and retail values have not dropped anywhere near as quickly as wholesale values, not the asking prices anyway, but I do suspect that most dealers today would entertain negotiating off of those asking prices much more so than they have um, in the previous, I don't know, 17, 18 months. 100%. And we've seen it, let's be really clear, trade-in values down significantly. Yes. I mean, we've, we've unfortunately over the past few months just seen that become a reality. And especially as interest rates rise, you kind of have that triangulation of when can I negotiate the best price for the used car? When can I sell my car for the most money? And when's the interest rate the best? We're kind of, I feel like, at that point where it's now or else trading values are going to continue to go down is our expectation. And interest rates, and are, interest rates are going to continue to go, to go up. up. It's like right now, I feel like, and we put out videos on this, like now is kind of the time to make that move on a used car. Now, it's not just going to be luxury vehicles, Dad. We've actually seen on the new car side, fleet sales yes. increase significantly. And this is a big deal because fleet sales are up 25% year over year, 18% year over year to rental car companies. Rental car companies for the past, I don't know, 12, 18 months have been really active at the wholesale auctions, buying sort of newer used cars for their rental fleets. Well, now they're actually starting to get their rental fleets fulfilled from new cars again. This means waning demand at the auto auction. Which is a, another indicator as to why the wholesale values have started to or have continued to decline at a fairly rapid pace at the uh, auto auctions because, well, you don't have Hertz and, and Enterprise and Avis yep. and uh, the others um, bidding up the prices on the used cars because they're getting new cars again from the manufacturers. So there's less pressure from, from those players um, helping to inflate the values. So that's why I think we've been seeing some wholesale values coming down. GM and Toyota were the largest year-over-year -year increase in terms of fleet sales, while Kia and Hyundai had the largest declines in fleet sales. Well, that's because they year. decided they were going to send their vehicles to the retail dealers. Thinking about getting auto insurance? Compare quotes from all the major carriers in one place. Join YAA.com slash insurance. It's quick, easy, and no spam. Now, Dad, we had a really interesting comment come out from a gentleman named Patrick Hummel, an analyst over at UBS. He said, Dad, quote, it will take three to six months for the auto industry to end up in oversupply, which will put an abrupt end to a three-year phase of unprecedented pricing power and profit margins for automakers. I can kind of start to see that a little bit if the fleet numbers go up, mm -hmm. because there's still, a, we've talked about um, essentially there being a bunch of pent up demand in the yes. car market. There's no more that there's more pent up demand than on the, on the fleet side. Like those rental car companies and, and government fleets don't want to be buying used cars. If we're starting to see fleet numbers go up yes. while wholesale used car prices are going down, is this not an indication that maybe the manufacturing issues on the new car side are getting better? 
Because fleet cars, they don't make as much money on. No. So why are they even producing them? You know, like, no, I think we're starting to see the effects of weakening demand. Yeah, they're definitely they're definitely getting better as far as the capability of manufacturing more vehicles than they had been in the past. Yep. Um, consumer demand is waning. Regardless of what anybody says, consumer demand is waning. There are fewer and fewer people in the market to buy up the existing new and used cars that are out there. Yep. And part of the reason for that is the continuing increase in interest rates that it's going to take for the buying public to pay when they want to finance that newer used car that they're looking at. So people are taking themselves out of the market as the Fed had hoped that they would to slow down demand. Well, if demand slows down, even at slower production rates, and, and let's face it, the manufacturers can't slow down the production rates any slower than what they had been. <laughs> yeah, their factories are already running well below capacity. So, so that, you know, now that they have the ability to produce a few more cars, they're going to want to produce those cars. Um, they're going to want to get those cars off of their books and into onto the dealer's books. Um, so yes, you could see supply build up uh, with that lack of demand. And then, you know, perhaps we'll see the return of some decent sized incentives, whether they be uh, cash incentives or whether they be sub subvented interest rates to help people buy cars uh, to try and stimulate the market once again. Two other comments from the wholesale auction, Dad. The first one being, while there are concerns about flood vehicles running through the lanes, they haven't seemed to start coming through, but we anticipate them to start running soon. The number of vehicles that were affected by Hurricane Ian is still unknown. Again, Cox Automotive put out a report that says 50,000. In addition to flood vehicles, the number of repossessed vehicles is also expected to increase as delinquency rates continue to rise. Mm -hmm. So we still haven't seen the effects of increased repossessions, which would also be another positive factor on supply in the wholesale market or on the used car market. Both of those factors are what gives me confidence, not the hurricane per se, but, yeah. but the increase in supply from repossessions and the increase in new car supply give me the confidence to continue to say that wholesale and I think retail prices on used cars will continue to decline until the spring selling season of next year. Does it mean you should wait to buy a car until spring selling season of next year? No, because interest rates are going up. We've done a separate video on that. And, and if Mr. Hummel's correct, yep. uh, you know, the spring selling season might not be anything to uh, to get thrilled about because there could just be so much waning demand that even when when you would normally expect to be selling more cars, there's just not enough people in the market to make that happen. We shall see.